What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this doodle portrait design. Now I've provided an image in the description down below for this lovely lady here for our subject for today's design but you can use any photograph of your choice. The rules still apply. I recommend practicing first with the image I've provided and then maybe trying it on your own photos. The only other thing you'll need is a couple of colours but they're in the video itself so you'll just grab them as and when they pop up. So make sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials and hit the like button down below if you enjoy the video. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, what we're gonna go ahead and do is insert the photograph of our subject. And to do that, it's really easy. We'll go up to these three dots here in the top right. We're then gonna to go to the option of import, and we're gonna select a photo. So you'll have needed to save the photo to your gallery. And when you tap on photos, you'll then find the image in your gallery. So you'll need to navigate to your photos to the photograph. And once you do, you can tap on it. And then it will give you this option up here. Do you want to import it as a layer or a reference? So we're going to go ahead and hit layer. And that will then fill the screen perfectly to the size we need, really. And then we can hit this tick at the top here and we're ready to go. Now, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is tap on our subject. So I'm going to bring the layer out a second. We're going to tap on the layer and we're going to bring the opacity down of that layer to 50%. We're going to get started with our base sort of foundation shapes so we're going to create a new layer above it we can even rename this layer if we tap here we get this option here and we can rename this and we'll call it base we'll then hit rename so so that you know what it is i'm referring to what we're then going to do is go to our colors we're going to grab white and otherwise if you've got the disc you can just drag it up into the top left hand corner there we're going to go to our brush and we're going to set the brush to the option of pens we're going to go to solid pen and the size we're going to want to set that at around about 3.1 pixels this will give us a nice small little shape to work with you could make it bigger or smaller but i think this looks great with the amount of detail we want to add so to get started what we're going to do is we're going to work on the foundations and the base shape of our subject here so simple things such as we've got the back of the shoulder here We've got the front of the shoulder, followed by the neck, of course, and her chest and her other shoulder. So with this style, we want to go ahead and just simply just create very loose lines, overlap your lines a few times like so. And that's pretty much what we want to try and achieve there. But you want to maybe add in a few more squiggles. So we're going to go ahead and go down the neck just to start with. And then we're going to go ahead and just move inwards ever so slightly. Now, this particular layer that we're working on, is going to be to create the basic shapes first of all to give our design some structure and then we'll add in some sort of filler squiggles as well so we're going to go ahead and go over her little collarbone there and around her shoulder and go backwards and forwards on that once or twice and then just around the back here we want to avoid the shadowed areas we don't want to add too much content to there so i'm just going to go ahead and just sort of round off the back here just ever so slightly like this there we've got some basic shapes in play and then what we want to do, the shoulder is a great example for this, is work out where the highlights are and where the shadows are. So we can see pretty much in this area here is where the highlights are and this area here is our shadowed area. So we want to be working out where the highlights are to add more squiggles in those areas. So all I'm going to do is just literally just give some squiggles in these areas. I'm going to go over to the sort of shadowed side a little bit, but then come back to the highlights and just give it a little bit more attention. So we've got a few squiggles there in those smaller areas. You can even just go back in maybe and just add in a couple more where necessary. But we're just trying to give that rounded impression. And by adding more squiggles in the highlighted area, we're going to build up on top of that. And that's the whole point of this particular tutorial. So I'll just go ahead and just run one line in there. That's fine. Then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the neck. So we've got a little bit of a highlight really in that sort of area there. We don't want to add in anything in there because that's in the shadows just underneath her sort of chin and jaw there. So we'll go ahead and just add in some squiggles. Now you want to kind of do like S shapes and squiggles. Don't forget to then go vertically as well so you can fill in that space a little bit more. We then have her chest. So we're just going to add in a line here just to sort of round off this shoulder in the back and then add some squiggles on there too. Her chest then we're going to go ahead and go down her chest here and then go back up in towards that neck area. And maybe a squiggle here too so just a little something in these areas just to round off all the shapes we can then move into her face so then what we'll do is we want to try and add in a line that's going to run down 
side here so we're going to almost perfectly outline our subject we can be a little bit looser here and there and just letting that run off into the shadow just where her hair just starts to create a shadow there on the side then from that we can go ahead and go up the hair now i can be a little bit more sort of squiggly here because the hair gets a little bit more curly and then i'm going to go ahead and just run a couple of squiggles so you can see there i tried to overlap myself a few times just to now build up that sort of squiggle effect we're then going to go ahead and go across her eyebrow here, so giving it a good amount of structure, and then maybe go back over it a couple of times just to give it, again, more squiggle effect. We'll go across this eyebrow as well, down here, just sort of boxing it out like so. So we're trying to identify main shapes here. If we move on to the nose, we can go ahead and just outline round here, so round the nostril. I went back on that twice, so round and then back on itself again. Let's then go around here as well. So just adding in some squiggles and you can be nice and loose with this. You don't have to be too particular about where you're adding them on this particular layer for a moment. There's a little bit of an area here where we just want to sort of just identify the shape of the nose a little bit more. We can then move into her mouth. So her mouth, we can go ahead and outline the bottom lip here. So just go around that area. Again, we're just trying to make it nice and loose nice and easy nice squiggles and then here on the lips we can see that there's a bit of a highlight in this area here so I'm just going to add some more squiggles in those areas on the lips let that run out to the side so I'm basically trying to cover the majority of that brighter area with some highlight but just nice and squiggly we then have the top lip so we're going to go ahead and outline that so we'll go over the top here going around to the top lip right down into the corner we'll create the underside of that top lip and then here we've got a little bit of a highlight on the top area so we'll give that a couple of squiggles there just let that maybe run down the side of the mouth there a couple of squiggles in these areas there's a little bit of a highlight here a little bit of a highlight there and that's all we'll add in that area for now i'm just going to go ahead and add an extra squiggle on the mouth there just to make sure it's still got that nice squiggly look then we've got the teeth i'm going to go ahead and outline the teeth and then give them some squiggles on the inside just to nicely outline them but also then fill them with some nice bright white and there we go that's the lips done as well and then we'll move into the eyes so we can clearly identify here on the side if we go around we'll go around the white area of the eye fill that in with some squiggles you don't want to make it too dense though so just leave it a little something like this we can then go ahead and go around the top of the eyelid into here we can add in some squiggles here for sort of the eyelashes We'll go around the bottom as well just running into that point over there in the corner here we can go ahead and just round off the eye a little bit more add in some squiggle there because there's a little bit of white there on the inside there's also a little bit here in the center of the eye we'll go around the top of the eye as well just down into this point and again you can go over it again if you want to just make it a little bit more loose with the squiggle we're going to move across to the other eye now and do the exact same so we'll just use this area here just nicely fill that in with some squiggles keep it nice and sort of light in the amount of filler a little area here too we'll go around the eye shape though just so we've got it nice and outlined on this particular layer anyway and then we'll go over the top of the eye here too we can go ahead and just nicely then add in some squiggles underneath but also some squiggles just here on the top where We've got the brighter areas of the eyelashes which will just add in a nice little bit of detail there and then zooming out we've done the majority of the face now so now looking at the face we've got primarily we've got a nice bit of highlight here on the cheek we've got another big highlight here and these ones are even brighter and that runs into a big highlight here there's also a little highlight on the chin there a little bit under the nose and also here too so they're primarily where we want to focus some squiggles just like we did on the shoulder, we can still add some in these areas here, just like I'm about to do now, but very sparingly because they are in the darker areas. So I'm going to go around here, underneath the eye, up towards the nose. We'll then move from here down into the chin, and we've got this really lovely highlight on her chin here. So around here, a little bit on the side of her mouth. Again, what we can then do is just leave that area for a second focus on the main highlight areas here give it some love with some squiggles we can add in some more squiggles here too and just let that run over to the other side as well 
and then we can come down, link up to that area here, add in some nice squiggles in those areas. Then we'll take a look at the nose and the forehead. So I know there's a big area here, so I'm just gonna do squiggles and change your angle, go up and down, go sideways, S shapes, whatever you like. Just a little bit of a highlight there. And that then runs out into this area on the side, but I don't wanna sort of leave that too empty. So I'm gonna run a couple of little squiggles there. We'll also run a couple of little squiggles down the side here too, down into that side. And then we've got a lovely little highlight here above the eye. We'll give that some love with some extra squiggles in those areas. Take a look at your brighter areas and see if you can maybe add in a couple of extra ones. Don't go too crazy because we've got the whole process to go through. And then we'll just link that up a little bit here. We've got a little sort of area of squiggles there too, just round the eye. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a couple more here, just underneath the eyebrow. Link towards this eyebrow as well. And zoom in out. That looks really good to me. I'm quite happy with how that looks for a second. I just wanna go ahead and just add in a little highlight there by adding in, of course, a little few squiggles. Then we get into the wonderful hair as well. So we've got a little bit of the ear here. We can just add in a, a few squiggles there for the ear, just to give that some definition. And then the hair, we've got loads of little squiggles here we can add in with her beautiful curly hair. So we can just add in some great little bit of detail on here. And you don't need to do every single area. So what you could do is you can do a strand there and then you can go ahead and just do the outline first of all. So let's just go around this edge, backwards and forwards a little bit, create a nice squiggles just to outline the area of the hair. And you can see I'm not really sticking too tightly to the shape too perfectly anyway. We'll do the same on the opposite side. So we'll just create some squiggles at the top here. I'm kind of going backwards and forwards on myself. And then we've got these lovely little bits here that just nicely separate from sort of the main body of the hair. That looks lovely. Right down into here. And just a few squiggles down there with just a couple of extra ones in this area. And that's kind of the outline. And then we can get into these strands here. So we've got all of them sort of stem from the center parting here. I'm just going to create some nice squiggles that just sort of resemble that and follow over the lightest parts of the hair. You don't need to do every area, like I said. We kind of want to just give the impression that we know where all the sort of individual strands are that are just being defined a little bit more with our squiggles. So I can see an area here too. I'm gonna to give that some squiggles. Give this some as well. And here as well, just run that up. We can run some pretty close to the edge. And then in this area here, for example, we've got some shadows there and it's very dark. You can't see many of the strands of hair and that's fine. Just leave it. There's a there's one little bit here and that's pretty much it. We can just leave that area and that's great. This is the whole purpose of this style by leaving little areas that are a little bit sort of emptier. They're your shadow areas and that's what will easily be portrayed to somebody looking at this. Then in the center here, we can just go ahead and just emphasize that sort of center in and a little sort of flick over towards the left and then also a little sort of flick off from here too with a couple more running off like this and a couple more there and what we're going to do is do the same on this side so we've got a beautiful little bit here another big one here so i'm just going to literally use that and then it just sort of very much separates as it gets closer to this edge over here squiggles for fun Lots and lots of squiggles. Change your angles again, like I said, just to really vary up your angles and your sort of direction of your squiggles. Couple of little bits in here. Then we'll go ahead and just add in a little bit in there. And I think that's it. We don't want to add in too much because again, that's a very dark area in terms of the hair. So we can pretty much leave that as is. Now that's pretty much the end of this particular stage. We could maybe go in and just sort of roughing up little areas here like round the hair just to sort of give that more uh, look of the area of the sort of frizz of the side of the hair there. I'm then just going to run a tiny little squiggle over here just where her neck starts to move round towards the left. And taking a look at her chest I think I'll just better define this area of her chest and also here too. Just making sure that those features are nicely drawn out and we can also just add a tiny bit more on the shoulder here. Now at any point, you can go ahead and simply turn off your reference photo and you'll be left with your base layer with all the base colors. 
So I know I just need to maybe add a tiny bit more onto the nose. So I'm going to bring my photo back in and just identify where the highlights are. So again, there's a highlight here on the end of the nose and I can just nicely run that into the rest of the design and also just make sure we outline the main features of our subject. So that's the base layer done. What we're going to do is we're going to move on from this and we're going to move towards a sort of mid-tones and highlight tones. So what we're going to do is we've got our base layer and we've got our photograph. We're going to turn off our base layer for a second and then we're going to go back to our photograph. We're going to tap on it and we're going to use the option here of duplicate. We'll move one of the photos up towards the top and the one that's left at the bottom, turn that one off. Now this layer at the top with our photograph, we're going to turn the opacity up to 100% just so you can see it. We'll then go to our options up here and we're going to go to the option of edit. And we're then going to use the option of curves. Now curves allows you to adjust certain aspects of the photo, whether it's red, green, blue, or all. And this node down here is the shadow. So I can go ahead and emphasize the shadows in whatever way I need to. But this is the one we're most looking forward to using, which is the highlights. So by dragging that across the top left, like so, I've brought it in from the side. We're now starting to exaggerate the highlights. This is going to allow us to very easily see where it is we need to add more squiggles onto our subject and if you want to you can also bring in the shadows and that will again help with the contrast look for you as a user who's doing this tutorial you'll be able to see where the highlights are even easier so i'm going to bring that in and take a look at where i've put my positions there and when you're done hit the tick at the bottom and just like before we tap on the layer and we lower the opacity down and we drop it down to 50 percent we're then going to create a new layer and we're going to tap on this layer and we're going to tap on its name and we're going to call this highlights because this will be the smallest set of our highlights. We're going to add in mid highlights afterwards. So we're going to hit rename for the layer. And then on this layer, we're now going to go ahead and add in our highlights. So looking at the image, we're going to zoom in. Let's move our layers out the way. All of our highlights have been exaggerated. We've got this beautiful highlight up here, a little bit here, a little bit here. We've got this area here around the cheek. I'm just outlining them for you. We've got this bit here on the lip. The lip itself has been exaggerated as well as the chin and a little highlight here. Now they're pretty much sort of the main areas on the face anyway. All of this has been blown out. So we've got this big area here. We've got this area here and a tiny bit on her shoulder. So they're all the areas we're going to aim to add some squiggles to and not really venture out of those areas. We're just going to add in highlights. So we're going to zoom in. We're going to just work on the forehead to start with and we're just going to add in some squiggles on there just to really fill out the the shape of it really adding in some extra squiggles on there and then come down into this highlight here adding in some more and that's you can see sort of the level of the amount of squiggles i've added into that area we've got another highlight here at the top of the eye which i'm gonna give some love to we then got a little bit here that just runs down her nose into her cheekbone beautiful cheekbone here nice amount of highlight on here a little bit there we've got a little bit of a highlight in this area too this is where it wraps around round under the nose into the center there at the top lip we'll add in some squiggles here on the top of the nose this beautiful highlight on there Taking a look at that. So that's kind of what we've got so far. We can always come back to it and add some more if needs be. So I'm going to add in a little highlight in this area here, which is just going to nicely create a little bit of a little bit more of a brighter tone. We've then got the top lip. So the top lips are kind of uh, an easy one to do. We outline it first and then add the squiggle sort of underneath. So a little squiggle like that. That helps us keep the definition of the mouth as well. So we don't want to ruin the definition by adding a squiggle that say goes like this because it's not going to match up nicely. We've then got the lip itself. So I'm just going to add in some sort of up and down squiggles to start with and then run some lines through it. And then maybe a couple of squiggles here and there just to add some detail onto the lip. Maybe even just the tiniest little sort of squiggle area here. Again, we've got her teeth, but I don't think we necessarily need to add in too much to them. So we'll outline them and just add in a light bit of coverage. Because again, we've already done that with our base layer. So we don't want to add in too much and overdo it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more highlight there. Let's add in a squiggle here as well, just on the chin. Another one just to really outline those beautiful highlights. We can go back into the eyes. The only thing I would say with the eyes is 
don't add too much in this area. Yes, you can outline it like so, but I would only add a little bit, which is why I said that on the base layer as well. You don't want to add in too much because we will just simply end up making them just solid white. We still want to have that sort of doodle look to it. What we'll also do is, is just use this highlight now that is on top of the eye just here. And also we're getting a little bit on the inside of the eye here now. So I'm just going to add in a tiny bit there. We've got a lot of highlight here just above where the eyelashes are. So we're going to add in some squiggle onto the top of the eye there. And maybe just a little line that runs off. And we've also got a little highlight here as well. that's just running round into this area. We're going to zoom out, take a look again. What can we do? Well, this highlight area here could do with a little bit more and maybe a little bit more up here too. But again, remember we've got to layer all of our layers on top of each other, so don't go too crazy. And then we've got these areas here. So we've got the top of this shoulder. Again, I'm kind of just giving this line here, which is going to nicely sort of outline the area. And then I can add in some highlight on top of that. Squiggles for fun, lots and lots of them. We'll then go ahead and emphasize this part of the neck. There's some really lovely shapes here that also just run round onto the top here. I'm going to make sure I leave a gap just where her shoulder here just runs into her sort of chest and body. And then also there's a big area here on her chest just to add in some more squiggles as well. With another little highlight just over there on the back shoulder with another little line there. So zoom in out. That's what we've got so far. What else could we add? We can go a little bit up the neck, just a little bit more and just, just fill out that shape a tiny bit. I'm going to come down the chest just a little bit more again. Make sure our squiggles are nice and random. Maybe give the odd little sort of random bit that runs off there. And also maybe the tiniest bit up here, just where her sort of collarbone or the bump on the top of the shoulder is. Now we're not going to add anything to their hair. We're going to leave that exactly as it is. And then taking a look at the face, I'm really happy with what I've added in there. The only thing I think I've missed is just the top of the eyes here. Just adding in some vertical sort of squiggles there and maybe a tiny bit on the inside of the eye just for extra little details. So I'm going to move on from that and we're going to kind of replicate exactly the same features. Now at this point you could actually turn off your photograph, take a look at what you've just done and then turn on your base shape so you can already start to see it come into life. You can already see our character there, our subject should I say, just nicely come into life. So I'm going to turn that off again. So let's bring out our layers once again. This photograph here that we just worked on, let's turn it back on. Let's go ahead and tap on the layer and duplicate it and drag that one to the top. So we hold down on the layer, drag it to the top. We can turn off this photograph and the highlight. We've then got this photograph at the top. We're going to go ahead and tap on the layer and increase the opacity up to 100%. We're going to go ahead and go back up to our options up here. We're going to go to edit and we're going to go to curves once again. And again, we're going to blow out the highlights to make them even bigger so we've got even more of an idea as to the brightest areas of our subject. You can bring in the black sort of node down here just the tiniest little bit and then tap on the tick when you're done. So match your nodes up to mine and hit the tick. We're going to create one more new layer at the top and we're going to call this layer, we're going to call it midtones because these are our midtones of our highlights. So because these ones have got bigger we've got more area to fill. So the layer we just did before was very specific to a tiny area. Now our highlights are much bigger. We've got more of an area to fill. That's why there are mid-tones that will sit on top of our base and with our highlights as well. So all we need to do is tap on the photograph, tap on it and lower the opacity down to 50% just so we can see our own lines. Go back up to your mid-tones layer and let's get started on this layer. So let's zoom in. I'll get the layers out of the way. I'm taking a look at this. We've got a big highlight here now that runs all the way around our subject, around onto this area here. We've now got more of a prominent area under the eye here too, but also the cheekbone as a whole has more of a highlight to it. The chin also now sort of runs round into this area here. And also this cheekbone also has a big area. So there's lots more areas we can add in. There's also the top of the brow here as well. And the highlights are actually just trickling round over to there. So yes, there's a lot of scribbles there and this area is completely blown out, but we need to just remember that we don't want to go too crazy in those areas. So let's undo all of those and get started on 
add it in our highlights. And I think the best area is always to start on the forehead. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Let's just add in some squiggles in this area. Try not to run into the eyebrows in any way. And the highlights have got much bigger. So we just need to follow them. They run round the top of the eyebrow here and they actually run all the way around into this cheekbone area. So we're going to create a nice big link here. And then we've got this highlight here too above the eye again. And then it's going to come across the nose even more than it did last time. And then a little bit under the eye as well. Adding in some really beautiful highlight. And again, we want to add a good amount of coverage, but we don't want to go too crazy with it because we've got the final sort of step of stacking these all on top of each other. So a good amount of coverage there that then runs into this area of the nose as well. So we're just going to nicely add in some detail here on the nose. It just runs underneath, around the top of the nostril here, and also a tiny little bit there too. This highlight, as I mentioned, goes all the way around here, all the way underneath the nose adding in some really lovely highlights and these will look great once we link them all together this runs off to the right a little bit round into our cheekbone if we take a look at the lip area we've got a little bit area here that we need to add a tiny bit on the inside of the nose we have just this area here before i forget so just this area there that just nicely runs up into the the nose there but the lips we've got this area here just on the top again that's really nice big highlight now on this area. So just giving it a bit of an outline, a couple of squiggles here. We've got lovely little details now that have started to be brought out of the lips. So we've got even more areas to just give a tiny little bit of a squiggle to. And that'll look great later on, trust me on that one. Then we'll go across this top area here. And we've got all of these lovely little lines inside our lips here. Nice big area. So vertical lines followed by a few little sort of horizontal ones that run through it will look nice a little bit across here too and then we'll go ahead and just give the teeth a little bit of a, a whiter look again and then the highlights just run round into here got the corner of the mouth and then we're going to go ahead and add in a highlight here on the chin which does actually in fact just run round into this area here and around the mouth there's a little bit of a brighter area. You can see that roughly in this sort of area here. So we're gonna go ahead and just add in a little bit of a, a highlight there and just let this area now run into the cheekbone. So this beautiful big area here that runs round just beside her eye. A couple of squiggles. You don't have to do this all by the way in one sort of line. You can let go and just build up lots of squiggles on top of one another. Let's go ahead and go over the top of the eye now because there's a lovely little bit of highlight that runs into there. Got a little bit of highlight just here underneath the eye. And these little squiggles here will really give off the impression of little eyelashes under there. Again, we've got some more sort of squiggles here to add because we've got a lovely big highlight now on the corner of the eye that's running around onto that top of the eyelid there. The eye itself, we've got a lovely little bit of detail here inside the eye now as well as a little bit here on the left. Again, with the eye, in terms of the white area, we want to keep it very skinny. We don't want to add in too much because again, once we layer it all on top, they'll just be really white, really too bright, too full. So a little bit on the inside of the eye here, another little bit there too. Again, we'll do the eye. I'm going to run it straight into that highlight. And I'm going to add a tiny bit here just to exaggerate the inside of that eye a tiny bit. And again, we're going to go over the top of the eye, on top of the lid there. Some highlight here that just runs up around the side of the face. A couple of squiggles there. So we've got quite a lot of coverage, and that's fine. That's what we're meant to be doing. We're going to cover up the chin here, and then just let that sort of run off to the right-hand side, where it then runs into sort of the shadow areas of her face. We've got a nice big shadow on that side. Now looking at the neck, that's now much, much bigger. So we can just add in a big highlight here that runs all the way around. We can maybe even just run it all the way up towards this area here where there's a little bit of a skin just on the side there. Add in some big highlights. Don't go too mad in this area. Again, we've got our base shape. So we're gonna somewhat try to stick to what we know is there. We know there is a big shoulder area here. So I'm just gonna 
do exactly that, but it does roll around onto the back a tiny bit. So I'm just going to roll that highlight around. And by making your squiggles actually follow sort of the contour of our subject here, it will better pull off the sort of concept of where all the shapes are. So you can see there, by running this squiggle down her chest there, and then maybe another one around the shoulder, you, looking at it, know that there are certain shapes in there that resemble, you know, the body anatomy. So a little few more squiggles over there. Taking a look at that, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and turn off our photograph just to take a look. Oh, that's awesome. Really happy with how that looks. Let's turn that back on and just triple check we've not missed anything. There's a little bit of highlight here underneath the eyebrow. We've got a little bit here that runs up and joins into the nose. So that's good. We'll add that in. Taking a look at that, I think that's pretty much everything we've got. You can take a look at the hair at this point and just see which bits really take your fancy. Maybe a few extra squiggles here, but not too many on the hair. Well, I would recommend keeping the hair pretty light, not too much, but a couple of extra squiggles here and there of just the areas that are really catching your eye will look nice. And there we go. That is the mid-tones done. So let's turn off the photograph. We've got this layer here. We'll then turn on our highlight tones and we'll turn on our base tones. And there we go. Our subject has been doodled and we have this beautiful doodle portrait. How cool does that look? Now, what we can do is add in some color and also just a very sort of basic background. So I'm gonna bring out my layers. For a minute, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and pinch all six layers into one. That will group your design together in case you wanna go back in and make any adjustments. So if we open up the group, you've now got all your layers in there. We're gonna tap on our mid-tones. We're gonna tap on it, duplicate it, and drag it out of the group towards the top. We're gonna to grab our highlights, tap on it, duplicate it, and drag it out up towards the top where those extra mid-tones are. And the base again, we're gonna tap on it, we're gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna drag it up towards the top again. Now you can close this group down. You can use the folder icon there and also turn it off with the eye. It's still there, but it's just hidden. And then what we can do is we can tap on our highlights. We can go to the option here of merge, which will merge it down. And then we can tap on this layer here at the top called base and merge that down. So now we've got all of our doodle on one layer. Now what we can do is just simply tap on the layer and use the option of alpha lock here, which will allow us to paint within those lines, but not spill outside of it. So what we'll do is we'll go up to our colors and now you can pick any color you want. I'm actually gonna use one of the colors that's in the basic palette, which is this third color here. And if you're interested in the hex code, it is this one right here. So what we're then gonna do is go to our brush. We're gonna to go to the option of sprayers and we're gonna scroll down until we get to the soft brush. And once we've got the soft airbrush, we're gonna go ahead and make our size very large, probably around about 800. And because the layer is alpha locked, what we can do now is paint at the bottom and then very lightly just blend that out in towards the middle of our subject, just adding a little bit of color. So feel free to experiment with different colors, but I think this looks particularly cool. And then what we're gonna do is create that basic background that I mentioned. So we'll go to our colors. Let's grab white here at the bottom left of the basic palette or otherwise in your disc, it's right at the very top left. We're gonna go back to our brush. We're gonna go back to the option of pens and the solid pen. We're gonna to go to our layers, create a new layer and drag it underneath that layer that we just colored in. And then what we're gonna do is just add in some background squiggles, just to sort of fill out the background area. So a couple of squiggles like this will look nice. It's just a little something there to add into the background. And don't worry if it sort of runs into your design where you particularly like it. We're gonna tap on the layer and lower the opacity down. And we're gonna drop that down to about 50%. If not lower, we could go to 40. It's just meant to be a little something in the background. And then we're gonna create one more new layer before we finish. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our brush. We're gonna change this to the option of sprayers again. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab the splatter brush. Now we're gonna make our brush size set to 231. And we're just gonna tap away a few times, just adding in some cool splatters in the background here, just to make it look a little bit looser and have a really nice little sort of casual look to it. And once you're done, you can pinch with two fingers, you can go full screen with four, and you end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, be sure to subscribe for weekly Infinite Painter tutorials and make sure to drop a like down on the video.
If you're interested in today's equipment list, I've got the Sketchboard Pro that you can always use code JOELCREATE to get yourself a nice 10% off. I'm using the pen matte screen cover, again a discount code in the description, and the glove for today is the Dudro glove. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, you'll probably like this one over here on the screen now. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.